Do you have a child who loves electronics, but you don't have the money or the budget for all the kits and tools? Well, in this video, I'm gonna show you some free online lab simulators that your child will enjoy, and so will your budget. Stay tuned. So in this video, we're going to address how do I find online activities that my kid will enjoy and won't break my budget. Well, if you have a computer or a laptop, I'm gonna show you where to go and how to get started with electronic online simulators. All right, guys, here we go. So there are some really cool simulators out there that cost absolutely nothing. We just need to know how to find them, right? So the first thing I did uh, when I was looking for these kind of resources is I went on to a basic Google search. You know how to do Google, Bing, Yahoo, whatever your favorite is that you like to use. And I typed in circuit simulators for kids. Uh, you can also type in electronic circuit, uh, circuit simulators for kids or just type in circuit simulators. And you're going to get a, a bunch of different things here that are going to pop up. Now, just a bit of warning when uh, some tips when you're doing some online searching that uh, companies pay to get top ranks. So you want to really be careful about using anything that's says add next to it. Um, some of those may actually be pay for uh, types of simulators. So scroll down, you know, kind of once you get past the, um, the top ads and stuff, there's usually some really good things that you want to take a look at. Um, I actually use the circuit construction kit, which is from the uh, PHET program out of Colorado. And we're going to use that one today, which I think you're really going to love it. Uh, there are some other ones you can go through and just kind of click and see what they look like. Uh, some of them, though, might be pay. Uh, they start out as, you know, uh, look like a, a nice little simulator you can launch right away. But this one here, I think, is great. It does cost money, but it gives you a very limited um, scope of working with the circuits. And then at some point, uh, it tells you, hey, you're going to have to pay for this. But uh, this is a little more advanced than what we're going to do today. So I'm not going to work with this one. But at uh, some point in the future, I might do an overview of this for more of an advanced, uh, advanced kit. So going back to the search that I found. All right, so there was one right here called Circuit Construction Kit. So that one here I like a lot because it's got, it's free. It's totally free. Um, so when we get into this, there's two ways you can do this, right? So there's the online view. You can basically click right on this and um, it's gonna start you in a window and it's gonna look similar to this. And then it's gonna let you do everything you want to. Again, though, you have to have an internet up and running in a browser in order to do the, the web version. Or you can hit the download button. Uh, the download button will actually bring a, a, uh, a file and it's, a, uh, it's an HTML file and it actually will load it on your computer locally so that if you want to just take it with you on a laptop, if you're going on a vacation or you're just going on a road trip, uh, install this and run it right from the laptop with no internet connection whatsoever. So I like that feature. So when we get into the actual lab, this is what it's gonna look like. So when you launch it, again, you can launch it from the web browser and you're gonna get two choices to go with. Uh, the intro is basically the same as the lab. It just has less features, but I like to go right for the gusto and hit the lab simulator. And once you highlight it in yellow, you can click it again. And this is your main screen. This is your workable area or your electronic palette if you wanna put a uh, artsy uh, type of name to it. So in this video, I'm gonna be referencing uh, some of the other videos I've done, namely the uh, how to build simple circuits and the uh, STEM kit review for Snaptricity. So we're gonna take the examples from that video and we're going to apply it to the simulation environment so we can get a real world feel of how something in the physical uh, world that we did translates into the virtual environment that we're about to do here. All right, so let's take a look at the sidebar. So on the sidebar, these are all the basic components. Um, and again, it's a very, I'm going to say a scaled down version. So we're not going to have all the things in a kit that we would normally have and pay for. Um, as I find more resources online, I will make sure uh, to post a video about it. So if we go down the sidebar, 
Uh, these are very easy to use and they're actually very easy to configure. And any um, child that has already worked with electronics is gonna probably pick this up pretty quick. Uh, parents, if you've worked with electronics a little bit in the past, this is definitely gonna be right down your alley. So if we kind of scroll down here, we have our wire, we have batteries, light bulbs, resistors. Uh, at the top here, we have uh, additional resources and, and different switches. Um, but one thing we'll notice when we start working with this is that um, all these elements here are configurable. So I'm gonna show you what that means here in a minute. Um, and <laughs> this is kind of funny. Uh, these are all our types of resistors. So we talk about resistor of something that um, will negate or um, uh, restrict the flow of electrons in a circuit. So this is just some examples of things you can kind of test and say, okay, how much resistance does a dollar bill have? Do electrons flow through a dollar bill or a paper clip or a coin, an eraser? Um, some of these are actually what we would call insulators. Uh, an eraser has rubber content to it, so it's technically an insulator. Uh, some of our metallic devices here uh, are conductors. A hand would actually be a conductor, depending on how much voltage uh, amperage is going through the circuit. That's a safety concern. Uh, a dog <laughs> wouldn't be something you would put in a circuit. It's definitely a uh, conductor if the voltage is right and a pencil. So pencils usually have graphite in them, which can be a conductor. And some point down the line, we can see how that works on our circuit. All right, well, let's start with building our series circuit. Uh, and this is gonna be referencing back to the video that I just did re uh, recently on building simple circuits, uh, Snaptricity uh, kit review. And we're going to start with our battery pack right here. So again, you can just drag and drop things we want to put in here. This is really simple. And once I have my battery in place, I can click it and I can choose, if you remember, the voltage of our other kit that we used was 4.5 volts. So I'm going to drop this down just so we have a real world simulation from the physical to the virtual. There we go. 4.5 volt battery. And the next thing I'm going to do, if you remember, we had an amp meter that we had connected. And the amp meter basically told us the current that was running through the circuit. An amp meter always has to be connected in line, uh, not on the outside of a circuit. All right, from there, we added a battery. I'm sorry, not a battery. It's a light bulb, Steve. Um, so I'm just going to put some conductors between them, just so we have a little more of a dimensional area here and I'm going to put another wire and you can change the, the length of these you can change the direction put them any way you want and I'll put my next batter or my next light bulb in and another wire and we'll put another light bulb right there you know, if you're not figured out by now, by now I like using a lot of conductor. All right, we'll put another conductor there and a switch and a conductor. And you can make this as fancy or not as you want. Very simple or very extravagant. All right, so if you remember our lab in the other video, we created a series circuit. Now, if you remember the outcome of this, um, were the lights dim or were they bright? Well, let's find out. So there we go. We clicked the little lever here, which is our switch. We close the circuit, which creates electron flow. And what we can see is these lights are very dim. So let's grab our voltmeter on this side. We're going to drag it down here. All right, our voltmeter is going to tell us, let's kind of hook up our leads here. So all we have to do is kind of drag the first lead, put it one location, take the other lead, put it at the next location. And we're getting 1.5 volts across this circuit. Now remember, every light bulb, every component here has resistance. These here, if I click on it one time, 
these are 10 ohms. All right. All right. So if I take my lead and I put it on an other area of the circuit, you can see three volts, three volts, 1.5 volts. Let's put this one up here. Three volts, 1.5. All right. So depending on the load that the, that the resistance is creating is going to tell me exactly what my voltages are. And if you see here, my current is still 1.5 amps. I'm sorry, 0.15 amps. So it's 1.5 milliamps right there. So if it was 1.5 amps, that would be a problem. We would be in some serious trouble right there. But that is a safe load right there. Okay. So there we go. That is our simulated circuit that we created from the physical circuit for series series electricity. All right, well, let's move into our parallel circuit. So this circuit is going to refer back to my video on simple circuits, project number 21. And this is gonna use three light bulbs and a power source and a switch. So I'm going to just pull out my three light bulbs, get my inventory going here, my battery, and my switch. And then we'll fill in the cabling or the conductors as we go here. So if you remember, we had a 4.5 volt battery, which was still consistent with our series circuit. So to change that, I'm going to click once on it and I'm going to bring this down using my slider bar and my arrows to 4.5 volts. And if I click anywhere out here, it will deactivate, activate, deactivate. All right, I'm gonna put my switch in place. And contrary to the last video, it's, it's sometimes good to have all your parts laid out and ready to go. That way it's, it's kind of simple, just kind of connect all the wires. And because the nice thing about this is you can make it look pretty fancy um, and make it look really close to an actual circuit, which is, um, just for the visual purpose and understanding how things work is, is, is very good to know. All right. So there we go. So anyway, again, remember, like I said, you have resistances on each load, um, or each component, but I'm going to leave those at 10 ohms. And remember ohm is a measure of resistance or how electrons are able to flow or not flow through a device. So we either have, um, when we create a light bulb, we have resistance, it's creating more heat and that will reduce the amount of voltage and amperage going through the rest of the circuit. All right. So let's connect our wires. We're going to put these in place. And remember we're doing a parallel circuit. So it's a little different. Things aren't in a racetrack format like they were, um, with the series. So I like to have things nice and clean, uh, when I'm putting them together. So I try to keep things as uniform and right angled as possible. And that's a good habit to get into because as you get into drawing schematics um, and design work, you want to be able to have very clean um, examples uh, and patterns and designs typically at right angles uh, when you're designing circuit boards. Okay almost there. So if you notice, now we have our light bulbs in a parallel. Again, this is a geometry term. We have things in parallel uh, and, and linear at the same time. I'm going to attach that. And our last connector here and if you notice how I just put this together very, very easily by pointing and clicking and dragging, um, all the components I use were in the first bar here. Um, we do have additionals, like we said down there, which we're not going to use in this video. And remember too, I also have my schematic version so I can click this button and it will show you the schematic version or the professional way things would look on an actual electronic diagram. But for our purposes, we're going to keep it on the more of the 
visual view of things so we understand what we're working with. All right, so I'm gonna bring my voltmeter down here just to have that ready. Again, I can just drag it out of the bar and we are gonna close our circuit. All right, so let's take some observations here like, like we do with any lab experiment. So we have our first light bulb in our, in our circuit, which seems to be a little brighter than the other two. Now, if I, I'm gonna do on this um, mode here is I'm gonna connect my first lead there and I'm gonna bring my next lead up here first. Now, again, this is measuring directly across the, the battery, so I will get the 4.5 volts that um, is standard. Now, again, it's got a minus in front of it because I've technically reversed polarity because I have the first probe on the uh, positive end. I'm going to go ahead and put this on this end here and then throw it on this side. There I have three, three volts down here. I have 4.5 plus now, because I, I put my probe on the opposite end here. So now my polarity is going the right way. So I have 4.5 volts, which I have no load in between here. So there's no resistance. If I put it on the opposite side of my first light bulb or my resistor, I'm getting three volts here. If I put it to the next one, I'm also getting three volts. So you can see the, the voltage supply is split between these two in a parallel circuit. If I put it up to this one here, I still get three volts. Now in the, the example we did in the, the actual lab, the physical lab, remember we took out a conductor and we just crossed it again, you know, we made a short circuit. We took the other two resistors or the light bulbs out. So to do that, I'm just gonna click on this circuit right here in this little branch I'm just going to turn my power off first. Click here. I'm just going to hit the cut button. And that breaks my circuit. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and pull that right down here. So now what I'm going to have, oh, let's just go ahead and put this up here. And we'll put this one on this side. And we'll close the circuit. And there we go. See how much brighter this light bulb is now because it's pulling the full 4.5 volts out of the battery, whereas it had to share the voltage with the other light bulbs or resistors on the circuit. So if you found this video to be a valuable part in your educational program, please hit the like and subscribe buttons below and share this video with others in your community. Also, don't forget to check the descriptions below for valuable links and resources.